Hey folks, welcome back to the kitchen here at Mark Kelly Farm. Today we're going to make something that I really enjoy. It's a Portuguese recipe. It's called Bafana. And contrary to popular, popular belief, it doesn't contain beef. If you're curious as to what this dish is, stick around and we'll show you. First off, thanks to my sister, Daphne, for the hat. We both watch that show and we enjoy it. So let's get started with the bafana. The bafana is a Portuguese sandwich. It's made with pork cutlets, which is basically pork loin cut really thin. Uh, you can just buy pork chops and, and cut them really thin if you want. And then they're, they're marinated in a Portuguese style marinade with some wine and some spices and then you're going to grill that or fry that and then you uh, cook some caramelized onions and you serve that up on a good piece of Portuguese bread which we call pop sec but uh, fantastic and we're going to show you how to do it. All right the easiest way to cut your thin cutlets put your pork on a cookie sheet Hold your hand over the top of the meat, holding it down to the cutting board. And then I like to do this towards the edge of the counter so your handle's off the counter. Now as you're cutting, don't look at the meat. You want to look at the distance between the blade and the cutting board as you're cutting. So if you're paying close attention to that, you will notice that you're about a quarter inch off the board and look at be watching the front and the back of the blade on either side of the cutlet and you can maintain that same thickness all the way across pull the bottom off and then do another one All right, let's make our marinade for our bifana. We have a quarter cup of white wine here. And to that, we're going to add one teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of red chili like a cayenne, something like that. There's a half a teaspoon of salt in here and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then uh, we have a half a teaspoon of anise seed. Um, if Kelly was going to be eating, I would not add this because she's not a fan, but it's it's a pretty good staple in Portuguese cooking. That and cinnamon you'll find a lot of. And then we got uh, about two cloves of crushed garlic. And it calls for one bay leaf, which I do not have. Uh, I need to put it on my store list. But I put a half a teaspoon of dry oregano in here, which will be a good substitution. So we're going to stir all this up in here. Going to get it all mixed. My uh, anise I just crushed up in my mortar and pestle here. Handy dandy little tool. Throw that in there. We'll throw our garlic in there. And we'll whisk that up. And then we're going to pour it over our cutlets and we'll toss our cutlets in this. And then we'll put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes because these cutlets are so thin. They really don't need much more than that. You could throw them in overnight. It would not matter. You could do this the night before. But uh, the longer they sit in there, just the more flavor they'll get. But this marinade is not going to go to waste, though, because we'll use it a little bit later in our dish. So let's pour this in there. And then we'll get this stuff stirred around. Got our cutlass marinating. Doesn't that look really good? So while this is sitting... You want to chop up one whole onion. I'm using a sweet onion for this because we're going to use this later on in the dish. So we'll be back in about 30 minutes. About 15 minutes in, I'm going to stir this up a little bit more. And we'll be back. Now for this marinade, if you don't have like a dry white wine is what you want. You don't want like a fruity wine. Uh, you could use a dry red wine in this. would be just fine. Or even maybe some red wine vinegar would work. Just something a little tangy to uh, bring a little uh, acid to that meat and it also helps tenderize it. 
but whatever you got is going to work with this. Now a good marinating hack if you want to save some time and you have the equipment is get you a vacuum container like this. This comes, I have several sizes that came with my food saver. You can put your meat and your marinade in here, put it under a vacuum, and then once you're done with that, you can immediately release it, and it it cuts down on your marinating time. It's almost instantaneous, especially with cutlets this thin. That's a good hack to use. All right, we got our stainless steel saute pan. You can use nonstick if you want, but I love the caramelization that this pan gets because that's going to add flavor. Our skillet is already hot. We're going to add a couple good tablespoons of olive oil, maybe two to three. Get plenty of lubrication going in this pan. And we're going to fly, fry our cutlets like a flash fry, maybe two minutes each side, if that. So you want your oil almost smoking once you get going. So we'll let that oil heat up. You want to start with a hot pan and hot oil. Um, well, hot pan, cold oil, get the oil hot before we put our meat in. So we'll come back when we start throwing the meat in. All right, our oil's got a little shimmer going on. You're going to be careful because this these cutlets are wet. So you can see when they hit that hot oil. We're going to do this in two stages. Alright, I'm going to clean my fingers up and then we'll be right back to flip these. Alright, our cutlets have probably been in for about 30 seconds. Most people don't know if you try to flip these too early, they're going to kind of stick. But if you wait a little bit until they're nice and caramelized on the bottom, the pan will kind of release the meat and then you can flip it. If it sticks, you want to leave it just a little bit longer. So let's check this first one we put in. Not quite enough color on there. So we'll give it another minute or so. All right, you can see the browning going on in the pan. Give these babies a flip. You got some nice color on the other side. If you want to go darker, you can, but that's about where I like them. And we'll give them about another minute and a half on that side. And then we'll pull these out. We're going to put them in our little dish here. And we'll do the rest that we have. So we got color on our second batch. We're going to pull these babies out. We've been cooking on high this whole time. Because you want good browning. You don't want to just like steam the meat. So now that we've got the meat out of the pan, we dump in our onions. And that's one whole sweet onion. And if you need a little more oil, which I think we're going to need, you can put a little more in the pan to get these going. And those cold onions will kind of deglaze the pan as well. And I think we're going to need about another tablespoon of oil probably. And we'll cook these onions until we get some color on these onions. And then once we're fairly close and the skillet dries up a little bit, we're going to dump the rest of this marinade in here with the onions. Once they get a little color on them. And then we'll reduce that down a little bit until it's nice and syrupy and thick. And then we're going to add our pork cutlets back to the pan. Looking good. Our onions are starting to get some color. So we'll take the rest of our marinade put in there. That'll deglaze the pan a little bit more. It'll give some more color and flavor to those onions. 
and it'll help them sweat out a little bit quicker. Once we start sweating pretty good, we'll turn our fire down to medium and just kind of simmer them a little bit. Okay, we got down to medium. We got enough softness on these uh, onions. So we're gonna put the meat back in the pot and whatever juice has accumulated. Spread these around a little bit. We're going to reheat the meat basically is what we're doing now. And as soon as we got everything sufficiently warm, we'll start building our sandwiches. So it's time to talk bread. And that's a discussion that's worth having. It's so hard to find a bread that has any body to it anymore. It's almost ridiculous. The rule is, and there's rules to making sandwich, sandwiches, believe it or not. If your filling is soft, like an egg salad, tuna salad, something like that, you use a soft bread. If your filling is a little more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a little more dense, I guess, like a hard salami or cold cuts and some aged cheese, Swiss cheese, whatever, your bread needs to be firmer or harder. You used to be able to get the good sandwich bread. There was a brand that we used to eat called Toscanas. Beautiful, nice, had a, a nice firm texture. It had like a cornmeal bottom on it. Fantastic bread for, for sandwiches, for hoagies. But you just can't find that stuff anymore. People want the soft bread so bad. It's like everybody's wearing dentures or something. But you need to find a good, hearty, almost crusty bread for this. The, the Portuguese use what's called pop sec. I don't have any, can't get it here in Nebraska. That is a recipe for another video. But I did find an Italian bread that is not as soft as most everything you find on the shelf. So we're going to use that. So here's that bread we were talking about. If you can't find a nice crusty bread or make your own like Portuguese pop sec, get you a nice firmer bread like this. These are already pre-split for us. So you just open that up, layer those pork cutlets in there, and then finish it off with some of those caramelized onions. You got a fantastic sandwich that's going to hold together. Uh, just like French dip, if you've ever eaten French dip on some of those soft rolls they have now, it's just ridiculous. Now if you've never rolled a sandwich, put your sandwich diagonally on your bread, close it up. Bring this piece over bring the sides over and then continue your roll and then put your seam on the bottom. There's our three beautiful Bafana. They're warming up real nice. You could also do these like a slider. Uh, find a really nice bread roll that you could do as a slider and then wrap these up. If you don't have foil, you could use uh, wax paper, parchment, butcher paper, whatever you need to to get these wrapped up. Sometimes you can find the little bags to put them in and then just roll the ends of them up. Uh, but they sell these foil sheets at the store. You get them right over where the stuff is in the foil aisle. So we're going to let these rest, and then we're going to have a meal to die for. Oh, and on the foil sheets, larger is always better. If they have the 14-inch, get those. It's so much easier. You're not having to tuck everything in so much. All right, folks. We're all steamy good in here. If you ever wondered why the hot dogs at the ballpark are better, it's because they wrap them and the bun steams with that hot hot dog or sausage inside. Just like the uh, the Red Castle burgers that we make, we wrap them, or sliders, wrap them up, and crazy good. So let's dig into this. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Wow, let's get into this. Now some people will put mustard on this. Not I. This has plenty of flavor for me and I like to taste the meat. Mm. That boy is a P.I.G. pig. Wow. 
Do my happy dance. Unbelievable. I miss this so much. Need to make these more often. But that's why you need the firmer bread. So when you bite into this, you don't get a mouthful of meat because the bread's disintegrating. The bread's able to soak up the juice and not just fall apart. Mm. Wow. You're going to have to excuse me while I finish this. Well, folks, I don't know if you can get an out-of-body experience from eating, uh, but that's as close as we're going to get, let me tell you. Fantastic. I've missed that so long. I'm so glad I decided to make it today. My cousin turned me on to some uh, Portuguese websites today, so that got me thinking Portuguese food, and this immediately snapped into my head. Ah, oh, Bafana! And I had the pork in the fridge already thought out, so go figure the planets align today. So something else I want to talk to you about. So remember, if you if you follow this channel, we don't charge memberships. Our content is always absolutely free. We don't do Patreon. We don't want our subscribers paying for anything. And that's the same reason why we don't sell merch. However, some of my friends and family have wanted some Mark Kelly Farm merch. So my cousin Don, uh, his son's a graphic artist, put together a couple logos for us. I'll show you those logos right now. So he put that together for us, and then he, he put it on his online store. And so I thought, if I'm buying this stuff for friends and family that want it, why not just make it available to anybody that wants it? I don't receive any money from this. I'm not making any money from this and would not, wouldn't want to. Um, my cousin, I think, make, gets a small cut, but not much. Just I let That's great because they designed it all and everything else and made all this possible. So if you're interested, there's a whole bunch of different stuff. I don't know why you'd want somebody else's stuff, but if you did, wanted a sticker or a hat or an apron or something like that, it's all on there. So I've already bought some for my friends and family that want stuff. But again, I don't want to sell merch. I don't want to get into merch business. This is a third-party company. It's all supposed to be printed here in the USA, so that's good. So if for some reason you want that stuff, it's there. I'll put the links. Uh, there's two different, you saw the two different uh, logos. You can get those logos on any of the merch. So link will be in the description if you want it. So that's all she wrote, folks. Fantastic recipe. I hope you try it. Uh, we'll be back here on Mark Kelly Farm here in a couple days. We got some uh, stuff we need to do out in the shop, so stick around for that. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. See you next time.